What's up guys, if you saw my latest vlog, you'll know that I'm leaving contracting full-time and looking for a full-time position in San Francisco. So it's time to dust off the old resume. Now it's not that out of date because just a couple months ago I did just make the rounds, but it does need updated a little bit. But the reason I wanted to talk about it was because when I did all those interviews a few months ago, I got a lot of compliments on my resume. Now my resume is a little bit unique. It's not just black and white words on a piece of paper. There's some design to it, which I'm gonna show you right here. And I wanted to run through my resume just to give you guys some ideas of what you could do for yours. Now, let me give you a disclaimer. I am not a resume expert. I don't sit around and look at resumes all day and make hiring decisions. I just know that I got complimented a lot on this resume, so I wanted to walk you guys through it and also tell you what I'm going to improve for this next round of job interviews. All right, let's dive in. Okay, let's start with just the overall design and layout. Now, as you can see, this isn't the typical black and white, just, you know, Word document on a piece of paper. I did put some design into it, and I get complimented on that a lot. Nine times out of 10, when you're sitting in an on-site interview, when you're sitting face-to-face -face with somebody across the table, they're gonna have your resume in front of them, and they're gonna be looking over it. And by having a nicely designed and laid out resume, that starts off that conversation on a good tone. So just a general overview, I have my personal information here up at the top with a picture of myself. Uh, here this middle section is kind of the meat of the resume and down at the bottom i have a timeline of my work history uh, we're going to go in each one of those sections individually and before we dive into the individual sections like i mentioned in my last vlog i am about to go on the job hunt again so i do need to update this so throughout this review i'm going to be pointing out areas that i need to update okay let's dive into this top section here Okay, so the first thing that stands out is there is a picture of myself. Now, if you Google any resume advice, they're gonna tell you not to do this. And for all I know, they're, they're probably right. I don't know. I thought this design looked better with a picture of myself at the top, but that's just my opinion. And on the topic of the picture, I need to update this. As you guys may have noticed, I have since shaved my head. I have lost the battle with heredity and am losing my hair, so I gave up and shaved my head. So I need an updated picture. So that is one thing I need to update. Here on the right, I do need to add this YouTube channel as a URL, because this is becoming a nice little marketing platform for me. Uh, off to the left here, you don't see it, but this is normally where I have my address, phone number, and stuff. I have it hidden uh, for the one that's actually on the internet because, you know, you don't really want that out on the internet. Uh, but when I do hand this to employers, I do have my, you know, address and phone number here on the left. So it does balance out the visual of this top part. And to wrap up this top part, I just have the title of iOS engineer here. Before we talk about this middle section, because that's what's going to take the most time, I want to go down to this bottom section. Now, this is just a quick glanceable timeline of my work history down here at the bottom. Now, those words, quick, glanceable, scannable, to me, that's the whole point of a resume. Nobody's going to read paragraphs upon paragraphs. So I wanted my resume. You can just look at it real quick, do some skimming, and you can pick out the important stuff uh, for them to ask me questions about. So about this timeline, this timeline does need work. Uh, I do need to fit in my latest contracting uh, stints, so I'll probably take out my college here, this Penn State University. But one thing that has constantly come up here is here I served in the US Navy on submarines, and that has always been a great conversation starter. You know, people find that interesting, especially on submarines. Uh, I always get questions about that, and that does start the conversation off on a good foot. So if you do have an interesting, you know, unique past you know, career or job, I would definitely add that or, or, or put that in there some way. When these interviewers are sitting across from you looking at your resume, they're looking for interesting stuff to talk to you about to get to know you better. And I can personally attest to that with my military service on submarines. I get asked about that all the time and the conversation always goes great. But again, the main point of this timeline down here is to just give a quick skimmable way so somebody can see my work history throughout my life. Okay, let's talk about this middle section, which is again, the meat of the resume. We'll start on the left side. Uh, so here on the left, I just have an about quick little paragraph about myself. Again, people aren't going to sit there and read forever, so keep it short. And then below that here, I just have my college. Uh, and then this is my dev boot camp. So that just gives a quick educational background. And for my work history, I just have the three most recent positions I, I've held with a, a, a two sentence quick, again, scannable, skimmable uh, description of what I've done. Because like I said, the person looking at your resume doesn't want to read a paragraph. They want to read a quick two sentence and then they're going to ask you questions about that and then you can go off and explain you know, what you did at that position. And again, a quick tip about this, and I had to deal with this especially because as you can see down here in the timeline, I have a pretty diverse background. I mean, I was in the military, I was an insurance agent, I was a growth lead, sales and marketing before I was an engineer. So not all of my work history is directly applicable when I apply to iOS engineer positions. So I did try to keep you know, this work history applicable to that. You know, Do the best you can to keep this work history to relevant work history. And for the most part, I don't really need to update this left side. I feel like this left side, the about section in the work history is pretty good. I feel like this right side needs some work though, but I'm going to go over with uh, what I have here. So here are skills. And as you can see, I have Swift as a skill because I, I do want to market myself as a Swift developer. Obviously, that's where Apple's going in the future. And that's just the truth. I've done about 95% of my career in Swift and very little Objective C. So I do want to market myself as a Swift developer because that's what I am. So I think this blurb about Swift here is good. Now the next two are more design focused than like, you know, hardcore programming focused. And as you may know, half the companies probably don't even use interface builder or storyboards. So I need to improve this skill section. I'll probably add a, you know, more of a hardcore programming skill. I'm not sure what it's going to be, or maybe I'll, I'll remove this UI UX design. I had this in here because at my previous position at Breathometer, I was the designer as well as 
the programmer. <laughs> so it all depends. If you're trying to get into a larger company, maybe keep these skills more specialized. Whereas if you're going to a small startup, you know, five to 10 people where you may have to wear multiple hats, now being a generalist, where having skills outside of programming directly could be very valuable. So it kind of all depends on what you're going for. But like I said, I do want to add more uh, programming type skills rather than just design heavy skills. So I'm actually probably going to get rid of this secondary skill set uh, section because it just says Objective C, which like I just mentioned, I'm not trying to market myself that way. Front end web dev, I, I mentioned that down here with HTML, CSS. Uh, and then agile development, like, okay, like everybody does that. So I'm probably gonna get rid of this secondary skills section and then add another uh, more programming specific skill here uh, to the skills paragraph. And then down here below secondary skills, I just have a list of frameworks that I have uh, worked with and I'm familiar with. And this list has expanded in, in the past few months since I've started contracting. So that being said, I would probably not call this side projects and say, you know, worked with in contracting or, or something because side projects is kind of vague. I mean, we're all developers. I'm sure we've all started, you know, tons of side projects that never saw the light of day or maybe you worked on it for two weeks. So I want this to be more official. So maybe I'll say with contracting. In that being said, I have to make sure my list of frameworks is stuff, you know, that I've done in contracting and stuff that I'm very familiar with and not something that I did just for two weeks messing around on a side project that didn't go anywhere. Now, another recommendation I saw when I was Googling, you know, iOS developer resumes was don't list the apps on your resume. Uh, obviously I ignored that. <laughs> um, again, I just went for visual appeal here. And, and again, I'm not really talking about these apps. I just want to show that I have apps on the app store and here they are. And I do need to add a couple here. This is out of date, but again, it just shows that you've worked on multiple apps in the app store. If you have it now, be smart about this. If you only have one app, you know, maybe don't list that as an app icon. Uh, I only have two right now. Again, I'm adding another one, but you know, if you have three, four, five, six, you know, just I don't think it's a bad thing to kind of just show the icons to show that you do have, you know, experience on multiple apps. But again, back to the disclaimer in the intro, I'm not a resume expert. I'm just going on the compliments that I've gotten and received. And then other skills here, I, I listed skills that aren't related to programming. So Sketch and Photoshop, again, I do have some design chops and I was a designer from a previous company. I can build some front end, you know, websites and things like customer service, sales and marketing, emotional intelligence, just kind of just non-programming skills to show that you are well-rounded. And then down here, interest is a big part of thing I want to talk about. Um, you know, people may say, what, what does this have to do with getting a job? I mean, the bottom line is people hire people they want to work with. So if you share common interests, you know, that's only a good thing. I'm not saying that's going to get you the job, but that is a step in the right direction. For example, having Star Wars on my resume, like I've had two or three interviews that started, literally started with a conversation about Star Wars. And obviously when you start the first 10 minutes of the interview talking about something you grew up on that you love and the other person loves it too, you're building that rapport and the interview gets off to a great start. So I highly recommend listing some interest. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to get you the job, but like I said, building a strong rapport with your interviewer is a huge step towards having a great interview. All right, so, so that's pretty much it. I mean, I just kind of wanted to give a quick rundown, uh, mainly talk about the sections that I include on my uh, resume. I don't necessarily want you guys to copy this or anything like that. Maybe take a few pieces you like from this, you know, implement it into yours. Uh, I am going to be updating this soon. You can check it out. I always have it on my website. If you go to seanallen.co and you scroll down to the bottom, there's a CV button that always has my most up-to-date resumes. So give me about a week or so and I'll have the updated one up there after I make the changes I mentioned here during this video. But yeah, if you have any questions about resume or, or specific questions about the feedback I got, you know, go ahead and leave a comment. So there you have it. There's my iOS resume. Hopefully this gave you guys some ideas on what you could do for yours or what not to do for yours to help you get your next iOS job. All right, if you found this at all useful, go and hit subscribe. I put out new iOS videos all the time.